I've been intrigued by the trendy mini PCs that have emerged in recent years, but most of them are overpriced for the computing power they offer. A few weeks ago, I stumbled upon an ultra-budget option selling for only $115. I decided to order one just for fun, figuring I could find some use for it at that price. The package arrived a few days ago. The brand is called Firebat, and the computer is quite compact, fitting easily in the palm of my hand. Opening the top lid reveals a slot for an extra SSD or hard drive. I didn't delve further into the internals as I'm not particularly interested in the components as long as they work properly. I'm glad this mini PC comes with a charger and an HDMI cable. I don't have to buy them separately. On this side, the PC features a power button, two USB 3 ports, and one USB 2 port. On the other side, there's a headphone jack, a gigabit Ethernet port, two HDMI ports, capable of outputting 4K60 video according to the spec sheet, another USB 2.0 port, and the power connector port. There's a blue LED bar on the front side. I'm not a fan of this as it can be distracting in a dark environment. Unfortunately, I haven't found a way to turn it off. The model I purchased has lower specs, featuring an Intel N100 CPU, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and 256 gigabytes of storage. For the price, I have no complaints. The PC came pre-installed with Windows 11, but I decided to install Linux to see how it would perform. I chose Nobara Linux, which I've been interested in trying for a while. It's developed by Thomas Kreider, known for his contributions to the world of Linux gaming, including Proton GE. I used a SanDisk USB drive, Berliner Etcher, and the Nobara Linux ISO to create a bootable USB drive. The installation process was straightforward. After burning the image file to the USB drive, I plugged it into the computer, changed the boot drive, selected Nobara Linux, and proceeded with the installation. I opted to erase the entire disk since I didn't need Windows. However, you can also install Linux alongside Windows if you prefer. The installation took only a few minutes. After unplugging the USB drive and rebooting, I was greeted by the Nobara Linux desktop. One of the things I like about Nobara Linux is that it comes with a lot of pre-installed and configured gaming-related software. There's a Steam icon right on the desktop. After setting up the Wi-Fi connection, I double-clicked the icon to install the Steam client. I then entered my account name and password, and I was ready to go. However, there's one more step to enable playing non-native Linux games. In the Steam settings under Compatibility, I enabled Steam Play for all other titles. After restarting the client, everything was set and ready. So what can this ultra-low-priced mini PC with an integrated Intel N100 GPU play? Let's find out. The first game I tried was Tomb Raider. The performance was not great. I got around 20 FPS at 1080p low settings and the image quality was poor. However, at 720p medium settings, I was able to achieve above 30 FPS most of the time. Locking it to 30 FPS made it quite playable.
The next 3D game I tested was Yakuza 4 Remastered, which is not particularly demanding. Unfortunately, I only got around 20 FPS at 1080p low settings. Prey refused to run at all and I couldn't find a solution to the error. At this point, I gave up on 3D games and explored other options. Triangle Strategy is a turn-based RPG with beautiful pixel art. At 1080p low settings and 70% resolution render scale, I got mid-20s FPS. Surprisingly, it was extremely playable and enjoyable. The frame rate remained stable in various scenarios, making for a great experience. Another game that ran surprisingly well was Vampire Survivors. This was one of my most played games in 2023 and it's highly addictive. While it may seem easy to run, the later gameplay can be CPU intensive when there's a lot going on. I was glad that this mini PC handled it very well. Dead Cells is another great casual game. I've been playing it on my Nintendo Switch for a few years now. The game would often experience frame drops in intensive scenarios on the handheld. However, on this tiny PC, I was getting a constant 60 FPS at 1080p. Ori and the Blind Forest was another disappointment. The game barely hit 30 FPS at 1080p. I had to lower the resolution to 720p, utilize FSR for a better image, and lock it to 30 FPS for a more stable frame rate. For just over $100, you can get this mini PC that can handle most 2D indie games perfectly, as well as some turn-based RPGs. However, don't expect to play graphically intensive 3D games on it. There are tons of great games that don't require powerful computers to run, and the majority of them are very compatible with Linux. I'm not sure about the performance in Windows, but if you're interested in trying out Linux gaming, this is a great low-budget option. As shown in this video, you can set up a Linux gaming environment on this tiny computer in less than 30 minutes. Besides gaming, it's also a complete Linux desktop, allowing you to browse the web, watch videos, do office work, and even edit photos and videos with the right software. Based on my previous experience, the bloated Windows 11 installation on such an underpowered device doesn't make much sense. Linux offers a better overall experience. With Linux, you don't have to deal with all this agreement or privacy nonsense. It just boots right up to the desktop after installation, and you're already using your computer. In my next video, I'll try some emulation in Linux on this mini PC. If you're interested, please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching.